baby. So this situation is a pretty it's a pretty popular situation in our game. Anytime you lose line of sight with a cop, they're gonna turn into search mode. You can always turn out your engine and hide into the city. We really want to brought the subtle driving that makes sense when you know you drive against cops and all of that stuff. In a way, it's our way of not insulting your intelligence and bringing something more to the table than just automatic detection. But when you do get detected, it gets pretty hardcore. dynamic way, we're making yeah, sure that you can always break line of sight against the cop. And then you can hide and outsmart them this way. Why are we doing those kind of subtlety in the mechanic? It's quite simple. We're selling a very smart man, a street smart guy, Aiden Pierce. You need to feel it to the mechanics. If we're not doing that, we're not respecting what a vigilante means. You need to be a guy that, that wants to avoid attention to himself, or at least if you're that kind of player. Vigilante Aiden Pierce, engaged in several bold interventions, Pierce has divided the city with locals praying. 911, state your emergency, please. Hey, I'm, I'm freaking out. I saw. Kill it <gasps> now. Hello, I need you to stay on the line. Hey, hey, why are you doing this? Now, in that kind of situation, we're used to see a guy draw a gun and shoot people in the face. That's not the only way of dealing with problems in Wash Dogs. Since you're not a criminal by default, but more a vigilante, that you're going to define yourself which kind it is. We really want to make sure you can apprehend people without violence. If you point a guy at that guy and you shoot him in the face, other people will have found. It's going to start going crazy. People will call the cops anyway. So you need to deal with the situation differently, especially if you're a guy who cares about those things. Another thing you can do when you can profile everybody and hack everyone is you can access the Wi-Fi free service that CTOS is giving to all citizens of Chicago. The side effect of free Wi-Fi is that it's pretty shitty security. But actually, there's quite a bit of vulnerabilities inside, and PY is going to hack at it and exploit it to see where T-Bone is and what kind of situation he have in his hand. Oh, T-Bone. Oh, get this, brother. That prototype shit I ain't never seen. I'm in love. T-Bone, wrap it up. Sound cranky. Forget the toys. We gotta get you out. Oh, shit. Sorry, princess. Now, our cool thing about bringing narrative while you're spying on interiors is you still have control of what you do. You can act stuff to attract people okay. elsewhere. Move. You can give instruction to T-Bone to make him out. That. So everything that follows is completely gameplay. It's only one way of acting and to protect VIP and watchdogs. I'm so on in this way. version, you could just Listen climb the stairs, take your gun out, and kill everyone with T-Bone on your side. You could stealth your way through doing stealth takedown and with T-Bone as well. Or you could use cameras and just silently give him instruction to get him out of trouble. Hey, or you uh, can just combine everything if you want. Son of a bitch. Stuck. Don't move until I say. Ten four, brother. Move. Ten four, brother. Move it. You got it. You find what we need in there? Yeah. Default didn't expect us to find this romper room. 
I got one I needed to track him. Don't you worry. We're getting closer to your sister. Now, go. is asking for help because the cops are coming. This is just a signal we sent to any mobile device that have the, M the CTOS mobile device on them. So with this, anybody in the bus can accept and in real time help QI get out. So right now the chopper has been hacked and all the bullets that are activated there, they're all doing the CLAD is doing right now, using our tablet in real time to help QI escape. Even the little Freeze. message in the background is our doing. But of course, when Aiden Pierce gets cornered, he still has to deal with the situation the himself. We simulate the entire electricity of the, of the entire city. That way, you can act it and you can create systemic blackout in the entire city to escape and do a whole bunch of other stuff. Thank you very much, guys. Like, and keep in mind, all of that was just one possibility. If you don't ask for help, nobody will join in your game, and you're going to have to figure out the problem yourself. You could go with gun blazing, stealth, hacking, or a combination of the three. Like, the amount of possibilities in Watch Dogs are just unprecedented. And we can't wait to show you more and to put the game in your hand. Thank you very much for your attention, and have a nice C3. think you're untouchable? I'm here to shatter your illusions.
you'll never be free again. Hey guys, we are back with Jonathan from the Watch Dogs team. Great demo. We Thanks just you. watched. Thank you. Super amazing. Very excited for this game. I have so many questions. Go because on. every demo you, that you show seems to highlight almost a completely different skill set. And so my first question, I think the question on a lot of people's minds, how much of this is an action game? How much of this is a hacking game? That's a, that's a great question, actually. It's pretty much uh, a, the player who's going to answer that ratio, actually. Uh, you know, when you, make, when you make a game that open, the key element is to let the player express himself. Like, I think it, it's a lot more engaging, or at least it's a personal thing I, I, I believe when I play a game, when the player figures problems by himself. Yeah. Uh, when we play games repeatedly, and we play a lot of them, uh, we end up finding uh, similar problems to fix uh, with similar situation and similar tools to pull it off. So it becomes a second nature, and it becomes very familiar as an experience, which is a good thing in, in an extent. But it, from, for once in a while, it's cool to bring something new to the table. Sure. So bringing the acting in there, uh, cannot just be, oh, here's a hacking mission. Do it that way. If you do that, then you're just putting hacking in a vacuum, separately from the other situation people are used to face. Gotcha. What you want to do is bring a situation where the player has new tools in his head that he consider. So as the game progress, the player gets more and more of those skills, and that gives him the ability to progressively get in that state of mind where he has to make a decision in one second to survive. But this time around, he consider completely different options. This is only at this point that you can achieve something where the player can put the controller down and say, wow, it really felt different. Yeah. You know? So you're, you're talking about that last moment stuff, and there's got to be there's got to be a difference in the amount of time it takes me to shoot a gun and the amount of time it takes to hack something. Let, let's talk about the hacking systems. People were, were kind of interested in how all that's going to work, and you, you just talked on stage a little bit about you decided to go with like a one button hacking system yes. for all devices. Yes. Tell me a little bit about that choice. It's a, it's, it's a very important thing to be able to bring hacking to the end of the player as a possibility all the time. Uh, it goes along with what I said before. If you don't want to put a hacking in a vacuum in terms of experience, it needs to be available all the time. Uh, you cannot ask a player to do some kind of complicated inputs mm. or mini game to hack something while he's driving a car in 200 miles per hour and you have six other cars that want to kill him. If you have that situation happening, you play test it. That's not the time crazy. you want to be twisting yeah. pipes on a grid, right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah, those kind of stuff. <laughs> so, like, I mean, we have those kind of mini game in a very specific, like, more secured area because okay. it brings some nice twist to it. But the real, uh, the real element of hacking is access, right? Like, you have a bunch of smart people in our, our cosmogony that will bring, you know, like those hacking skills to you so you can actually use those device and just point and do it. Whatever you're, whatever you're driving, standing yeah. still, hacking to a camera and hacking from there, it needs to be everywhere for the player to enjoy. Uh, let's talk a little bit about traversal. Uh, Aiden seems to be a very, very mobile guy. I, I, you're definitely getting a lot of shades of almost Assassin's Creed level of mobility. Uh, is he kind of on par with that? Is he is he like Ezio level parkour or? Nah, he's definitely not that kind of ninja who can climb everywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, he's a different kind of athletic guy. Like he can move very agilely into the environment. He can climb elements for a very simple reason. Again, it's not it's not about. Of course, it's cool to be Ubisoft Montreal and having people who knows how to do that. Yeah. So you can sit down with them, like do it your way, make sure it fits with Watch Dogs. But every time you put a dynamic in a game, you need to know why. You need to feel like it's filling a need for the player to enjoy it. If you're in an open world and you're in the middle of a fight that is completely emergent, that's out of control, and you need to improvise in front of it, imagine how it would feel if you had to go around every car and avoid hello, like every little yeah. object here and there. It feels terrible. and You don't feel like a cool guy. You don't feel like you can express yourself properly. Mm -hmm. So it's very important you can take cover on anything, including dynamic objects. So if you create a car crash, it might just be to create cover for you. Yeah. So you can actually hide and start finding back. You need to be able to vault over, run, slide, climb fences without effort. Yeah. Or else, there's too much going on and you cannot express You express have to be a video through. game character. You have to be yeah, a video game hero. You have to feel hero. those yeah. skills. But that's why we put it in there. Then having Assassin's screen in the corner helps because sure. you can understand what works, what doesn't work, 
and also how to code it properly so it feels right. So talking about all these choices, you're talking about your hacking and your action and your traversal. Aiden seems like a dude who's really good at everything. How did Aiden get this good? What is what is Aiden's story? Why can he do these things? Oh, Aiden, Aiden has a pretty shady past. Like, uh, he, he, he's definitely born in violence, grew up in the dirty streets of Chicago, mm -hmm. and, and he have an interesting background family. I'm not gonna say too much about it, because okay. I, think, I think there's an interest for the player to discover those elements progressively. And also, it's kind of neat to not overly explain all of those stuffs too fast. Yeah. But Aiden has seen a lot of stuff in his life, and definitely his skills come from somewhere, I'll say it that way. Um, let's also talk about the way these skills are going to be expressed in terms of progression, in terms yeah. of leveling up. Yeah. Obviously, your hacking skills are going to get better as you go. Your fighting yeah. skills are going to get better as you go. Can you talk about how those, is it, is it kind of a skill yeah, tree absolutely. system? Yeah, there's a skill tree system. Uh, there's a system of perks for uh, like progressing into his navigation, those kind of stuff, shooting. Uh, there's also all the weapons, which is a, a classic. Mm -hmm. But then the, the most important one is the technology, the hacking, and yeah. all of that stuff. So this one, you start by working in the world, making sure that you get connected to your system. So we have this thing called the grid, right? So you have an awesome, beautiful way of visualizing the data flow of Chicago. So you need to physically go to certain places, break in, install backdoor access to it. Okay. So you can have one of those toolkits that gives you permanent access to everything around you. And once you did that into a district, now you start having connectivity in that district. Gotcha. That's the first part, how you get connected to the entire city. The second part is the pure tech skill tree, where when you progress in the game, you side activities, main mission, you get tech points, and you can actually exchange that uh, with a group called DeathSec, that we're not going to talk about too much today. Uh, that is our okay. group of hackers. Sorry about that. Okay. Uh, those guys are pretty smart, and you end up like exchanging for those kinds of tools. So you can choose which one you want in each order. So this little RPG element, which is very important for the yeah. kind of game we're making to have, is indeed in there. So you can progressively understand how those things work, choose the one you like, and then start expressing yourself. For yeah, so at uh, PAX last year, we saw, and, and also today, we've seen more and more of your companion app integration. Yeah. We've seen people can go into your game and help you. You yeah. can go into your game, you can go into somebody else's game and mess with them. Yeah. How much, you obviously want to keep a balance. You obviously want somebody to have their own watchdogs experience. Absolutely, yeah. How much does the companion app figure in? How much it's, does your game affect, how much is somebody else allowed to affect yeah. your game? It's, it's pretty simple actually. Like, it's a completely player-centric element. Like, first of all, when you ask for help, you ask for help. Right, like if you don't want to ask for help, you don't press a button, it's never gonna happen. So like it's up to the player to decide whether he wants something to help someone to help him or not. That's one part. When someone challenges you through a mobile device, mm. uh, it's the same principle. The mobile device guy challenges you. You receive one opportunity of activities. So it blends in with the rest of the free roaming activity in the game. So it's not like popping all the yeah. time, it just like feels like the rest of the stuff. If you accept it, then he gets there, he is the one controlling the chopper, yeah. he is the one spawning the cops, and good luck, right? You're trying to win against them. And if you win, then it fades back out and you're back into your experience. So, you know, going to do a side mission or yeah. going to deal with a guy like that is pretty much at the same level in our game, so it remains something the player control. It's the same thing we do with, uh, you know, this ability to have two console player yeah. merge together and hack each other, so this invasion is completely player-centric. Very cool. Uh, with, uh, with, with regards to the traffic intersection demo last year, yep. helping T-Bone out of the apartment yep. this year, we saw the traffic intersection twice. We saw an action way, we saw a hacking way. Today, we only saw T-Bone get out through the hacking of cameras and the help. Could I have done something different with that T-Bone oh, mission? Yeah. Oh yeah. Could that have, could, have, could we have blasted our way Absolutely. out of that apartment Absolutely. building? Absolutely. And is that the way it's going to be with every mission in the game? Yes. Or? Yes, wow. like you always have those options and you can be smart about it, right? Like you can, you can apprehend a situation, you can prepare for the cops if you want. Like you can craft your own tool, explosives, you can prepare the, 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 the cameras, spot the cameras where they're pointing. So with the camera, what's cool is you can be at one place and then at several places at once. So you mm -hmm. could imagine, for example, like hearing the cops, creating accidents all around the area, get the fuck out with like T-Bone, and you just leave, like yeah. all of those stuffs are possible. And I think the fun is there for the player to start feeling smart themselves. Uh, as, as somebody, you know, when you're designing a game like this though, don't you want people to lean towards the hacking? Isn't the hacking the kind of the interesting new, new thing in the game? Yes, but 
uh, you know, there's no point in, uh, I, I, I call that pressing the lemon. You yeah. know, like when, when you start pressing too hard on an idea to force the player to go there, it doesn't really work. I think the real, the real way of doing it is you render acting extremely useful in the challenge you're, present, you're gonna present to the player. And the real, the real challenge for a designer is not doing a new idea. Like, you know, hacking everything is, is a great idea and it's very hard to execute, but even when it works and everything is in the game, mm -hmm. the real job of a designer is to bring every player to consider it and to use them. Because if they drop them in a situation with a gun, yeah. the reality is even if he says, no, no, I want to do something different, they end up and their brain is like, yeah, that's efficient. Let's yeah. go with that. I want to win. And that's not a critique I'm doing. It's just normal human behavior. Yeah. So what we have to do is teach this new language to the player, right? It's like, um, I, I like to see a game like, um, like an instrument. Like it's almost like we're not doing, we're not a rock star on the stage showing something to the yeah. player. We're building a guitar. The rock star is the player. So our job is to teach music to that guy. Like he needs to know that he can do those kinds of things and those kinds of notes. If he doesn't know about them, yeah. it's gonna take him a very long time to discover them. So it's our responsibility to make it useful for them so they you, can actually use it. You wanna get them to the point, you wanna teach them so the next time they get in that situation, that reflex action isn't necessarily the gun they have Exactly, and there's a way to do that by presenting a problem. Instead of having like pop-up text on screen and stuff like that all the time, I think the best way to do it is to bring the player to experiment with the situation. It doesn't mean sometime that he's not gonna arrive like in front of a door with a window, oh shit, I cannot get past the door. Oh, there's a, there's a camera yeah. through the window. And now you're like, okay, he figured it out. It was a kind of a force in things. But it's, you have to bring the player to do those things, enjoy those things, and then afterwards you let him free. If he refuses to use it, yeah. don't, don't force the thing out too much. Like, you respect the player. Let him play the game he wants to play. Very cool. So I heard that there is potentially some cool stuff if you grab Watch Dogs on a PlayStation console. Yeah, there are extra stuff, like uh, extra skins and also one hour of content and side missions in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's awesome, man. Yeah. Very cool. Well, Jonathan, thank you so much for coming by. Thank you the very much. The game looks amazing. Like I said, one of my favorites thank you. of the show, for I sure. Uh, as we showed you earlier, the GT6 Academy competition is happening here at E3, and tomorrow they are going to crown a winner right here in the PlayStation exhibit booth. Here's a look at yesterday's day one competition highlights. <laughs> Every year. I've been here ever since it's been here. So you can see how you're ranking. Got our up shoot, down shoot. I think I've embarrassed myself enough. I went off the road like five times. I usually don't race in here. <laughs> I'm gonna get the game and get the steering wheel. Come back next year. Okay, baby. Okay, roll. Trying to get into those curves, in and out of those curves, is kind of hard. It's hard. It was a lot of fun. This is real in comparison to what GT5 is. Just gonna get back in line and kind of work my time down. I love GT. I think it's an awesome series. Uh, I need a little bit smoother. I need to attack the corners a little bit harder. I think I'll definitely be at the top. GT6, baby, 2013. You gotta get it. I'll be back tomorrow morning.